Hey, welcome. This is Jelle from Growing Bonsai and I'm sitting next to two of my signal trees. My signal trees? Yes, they are signal trees. Look at that. It's early summer. It's hot. It's very, very windy. I hope the sound comes through properly. But these trees are telling me you're too late in watering. So let's fix that before I talk more about why Potentilla is such a great tree for bonsai. Right, that will have them perk up in a minute. I use these as a signal tree, I said. Basically, it is telling me you are late with watering, but these are so thirsty, they drink so much water, and they start drooping so easily, that this is the very first plant in my garden to start drooping. Even before the weeds in the pots dry out, these tell me it is way too dry and it's way too windy to do anything. I hope you can still hear me. Um, I'm going to have to move. So where were we? Potentilla, as a bonsai. Really great. Of course, not because they need so much water, because the watering is actually a bit of a nuisance. I need to water these twice as often as most of my trees, because otherwise this will happen. Um, my garden is right now at the point it needs to get watered, so that's what I'll do right after this video. I'm going to hurry up. But basically what it makes a very nice tree is it creates very small leaves. And in fact, the small leaves that it has, has very small side leaves as well. Therefore, it looks like it has five small leaves for each leaf that it creates. This makes for a tree that really gives the impression of small branches, small leaves, nice ramification. Next to this, you only have to wire once or twice in the whole life of the bonsai. You set the main branches and the rest of the time, it's clip and grow all the way. That being said, Potentilla has a few downsides. The first downside looks like a positive initially. If you look at the tree trunk here, you see it consists of multiple sub trunks. It does this automatically. As a branch grows, it gets side branches and the side branches over time become sub branches. The downside of this is every branch has a very, very clear connection to another root. So if you do root work on the Potentilla and you clip main roots, you run the risk of very big sections of your tree to die off. And that is exactly what has happened here. Here, I clipped the root, it died off, and this whole section died off. Here on the inside, there's not a dead branch, and in the front of the tree, you'll see there's a complete deck segment. The nice thing is, this is all still alive, growing into this branch, but this one is dead. Now, if we look closely here, this hollow was formed because all the wood that was on the inside has rotted away. So that's another downside of Potentilla. The wood is very, very soft. So if you build a big tree, never try to incorporate large parts of that wood because it will rot away within five or 10 years, no matter what you do. The wood is so soft, the only way to keep it is to plastify it. And most people are not willing to do that. That is, however, what I've done to this piece of that wood. Here you can still see a little bit of a shine on the wood, but for the rest, you don't really notice that it has been plastified. Potentilla only thickens very, very slowly. But when it, very, when it thickens, what you get is bark that slowly starts peeling. And in summer, I'm not sure whether I'm still too early, you can peel large segments of bark off. And underneath it, you get a fresh yellow to red bark. You don't have to take it off. I do like to take it off because it looks nice for a couple of weeks. Still a little bit too early. There's a little bit of peeling starting but not enough yet to really get it off. So when repotting, make sure you leave the roots alone as much as possible. You can't because they grow lots of roots, so you have to cut back, but don't go too harsh on the main roots. They grow very, very fast. They grow tall branches, which is nice for development. But one of the positives of Potentilla is a very nice flower. This one is yellow, that one is pale yellow. Um, you have them in pink, you have them in white, but the flowers come at the end of this year's growth. Now here, in fact, there are flower buds forming. So if I now clip off here, there's no flowers until the side branches have extended and in the course of summer, flower buds start to appear. So one of the good strategies to have with Potentilla is, besides me now going to prune back these long stalks, yeah, I am, inside in the tree, you see a few long stalks developing as well. I'll leave those in place 
because they are going to carry the flowers while I prune the profile. Of course, you can also just let it grow naturally, let it flower and then afterwards prune because that's a benefit of Sapotentilla. Although they grow really, really fast, the branches don't thicken up all that much. So a branch like this, look at this. This is pretty much the thickening that you can expect over a season. Now, even if I flip it around here, you see, this is all brown. This is pretty much the thickening that you can expect. That's not a lot for this much extension. Here also, flower buds at the end. So one of the flower buds, you don't see much yet, but this is just a single one, right? There are clumps of flower buds possible. Anyway, I am going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to prune it back, giving the branches on the inside a little bit more chance to grow, leaving some of the branches where I think these might reach flowering stage this year, and in winter I clean it up. If you want to know what I do in winter with my Potentilla, I do actually have a video on winter maintenance of Potentilla, and I'll pop the link in down in the description, um, or actually at the end of this video. Now let's start off by saying it is of course never good to let your tree dry out as much as I did just now. Um, it is also for the video effect, but have you been paying attention during the video? Have you watched the branches? Can you tell what's happened? All back up. Last tips are coming here, but all in all the plant didn't suffer any damage from this. Um, don't do this just for recreation with all your trees because it is a bit of a risk. You do risk the branches dying off, the growing tips stopping, and a lack of water for the plant is a signal. Hmm, I'm getting too big. I should stop growing for a little bit. So don't do this if you want your trees to grow. I'm going to have to prune these a little bit. Pop the like button if you enjoy videos like this, so I'll make more of them. Now, how do you go about pruning a potentilla? Effectively, this is very, very simple. Once you have wired out the main branches, like you've pulled a branch down like this, this is actually tricky. Branches break very, very easily. So normally I wire out very thin branches like this one here. That one was wired out over winter, early spring. These I could wire out as well. Thicker than that, use tension wise. Once you have set out your branches as a sort of a fan or a hand shape, all you have to do is prune them back to where they started, leaving one or two leaves at the end. So basically this tree started growing all the way in here. I can just say, well, here's a leaf, I'm going to trim it back. I'm going to keep this a little bit shorter. I'm going to trim this one back further down. And you just go through the tree, trimming it back to profile. Then over summer, what will happen, all these side branches here, they will start growing, they'll start extending, and they'll start flowering. As said, I'm going to leave short ones like this in here because they will flower the soonest. And the side branches will create a bigger ramification and will also start flowering later in the season will be about this tall, full of flowers later on. That I'll just let happen. And then in winter, I'll go in and I'll give it another prune, maybe a little bit of a wire. But at this point in time, I just remove the big stalks so it doesn't look like a bush anymore. Once the flowering starts, I then actually have a bonsai that's flowering rather than just a big bush with some flowers over it, because that doesn't look nice. Another positive here is, of course, we're in the middle of a heat wave. I don't have to water all that much. That's a really, really big benefit because I'm going to, uh, going to be away for the weekend and I don't want to ask my neighbor to come in and water three times a day. Right, let me just do this for now. This is also a long one. This is pretty much it. What you see here is all these yellow leaves. It really is not a big concern. These leaves inside, they've dried out a little bit. I'll open it up, I'll clean them out and there'll be new side branches. Potentilla very, very readily grows back from cut branches. So with Potentilla you can remove a lot of foliage, can remove many branches, cut back hard, and it will bounce back very, very quickly. Digging them up from a garden is best done before they start to grow in early spring. Be careful cutting the big roots. Plant them up in open substrate, which holds a lot of water, because these are thirsty plants. I think I've mentioned that. I'm very sorry about the backdrop falling over. Um, I didn't want to risk it falling on top of the tree. So I decided not to go for a second attempt with the backdrop. And I'll just do it here, out in the tree. It's just really, really windy. I'm going to shut up. Now, 
put this in high speed with a bit of music in the background. That's just a few second clip. This one, of course. So I'm not really aiming at getting bigger branches, thicker branches. I just want to increase ramification. So I'm going to leave a few of the buds of this year, take out the dead stuff that I come across, and generally just do a profile prune. Um, when you're developing the tree, of course, you're going to leave branches longer. You let them grow out to thicken up. And then at the end of summer, you prune them back to the profile then. But now I don't want more thickening from many of these branches. So I'm just going to leave everything, prune it back, prune it to shape. But that's different from the pure development pruning. I am taking out areas where there's so many branches that it has, that it has completely closed the canopy. But that's only a few here and there. <coughs> so because they grow so fast you can sometimes do this two or three times a year leading to a quadrupling maybe of branches on the plant in one year so these develop very very fast which is another nice benefit of potentilla so in summary be careful with the roots they love a lot of water so you can use them as a signal plant but it also means you have to water frequently they love to grow. If you prune them, they ramify. If you don't prune them, you get flowers in summer. Balance this by, in summer, prune back once in early summer, like I'm doing now, and then let the plant just do its thing, leaving particularly some branches on the inside that can grow up, so this can still keep the profile of the tree well organized, yet have flowers around the level of the canopy. A branch like this, for instance, this will create flowers somewhere in this area. And later, in spring, you can just clip it off for the next year. I'm going to finish off pruning. Put this back into the sun. I'll find a few pictures of this one in flower. I think I have one or two. I'll pop that in the video. Now, because these trees need so much water, you might be tempted to put them in the shade. That is actually the wrong sentiment. You need to put them in full sun for compact growth, good ramification, and good flowering. So now uh, two weeks have passed, and I just thought I'd show you this lovely little flower. But as you can tell, the tree really, really has grown quite a bit before the first flowers start to appear at the end of these branches. That is a downside of this species. It is quite hard to keep them compact as they are flowering. Anyway, I didn't want to let you go without showing you what it looks like. Thank you for watching. This was your growing bonsai. Keep doing that. <laughs>